Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Robert Young in Louis Brumfield's McLeod's Folly on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we are delighted to present another story by Louis Brumfield whose work has already proved so popular on our program. Our choice for this evening is McLeod's Folly, a warm-hearted and clear-headed yarn about the exciting things that can happen in a small American town. This is the kind of thing Louis Brumfield does so well. He puts a firm finger on the pulse of American life, and the result is always good entertainment with a real meaning to it. Mr. Brumfield has been many things in his life. And nowadays, for instance, he does a lot of farming. But in his early years, he was a newspaper man. And it's doubtless from his recollections and experiences of that colorful and tumultuous world that he drew some of his inspiration for McLeod's folly. And we're especially lucky tonight in having in the starring role that very fine actor, Robert Young. And now, Frank Goss, how about a few words from you? There are hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar, for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying name on the back, Hallmark, well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. <laughs> Hallmark Playhouse, starring Robert Young in Louis Brumfield's McLeod's Folly. Nineteen thirty-one, and prosperity was still around the corner. Freight trains were crowded with men with aimless destinations and even more uncertain futures. Each and every one obsessed with the same idea. Somewhere in America, there must be a job. A freight train neared Plattsville. A boxcar door slid open, and a gaunt-looking young man in shabby but well-cut clothes leapt from the speeding car. Carefully dusting the cinders from his coat, he headed for town. Mister? Yeah? I'm looking for a job. Do you happen to know where Speed I... Beat it. I'm no employment agency. Thanks for the key to the city. I was only asking for honest work. Work? I... Hmm. If one of you shiftless tramps was faced with an honest job, you'd break both arms to get out of it. I could do one of two things. I could move along or I could paste you one. If I move along, I don't know where I'll wind up. At least if I paste you, I'll have the satisfaction of a... Job well done. Police! Police! Get hey, the police! What's the matter? This man to give what, me trouble. Hey, Gather on? around, what's folks. Closer. Here? Come on, yeah, closer. Matter? I've just what committed a horrible crime. Those. I've asked this man where I can find a job. Let me through From which tree shall I hang? Now, never mind, young man. I'm Mrs. McLeod. Now come along with me. Thanks, ma'am, but there seems to be a little discussion here, and I'd kind of like to see it settled. He talks fancy about wanting work, but he's a vagrant, a tramp. You don't have to listen to this young man. Just come along with me. Go on back to your newspaper office, Mrs. McLeod. Get out an obituary column. Stick to something you understand. No, stay here, Mrs. McLeod. You have an obituary column? Well, I... I might have another name for you to add to it. Come here, mister. You won't talk so fancy when you're in jail. I promise you that. Now, come along, young man. Everybody go home now. The show's over. Well, he doesn't look like a tramp. Well, thanks for taking my part, but I've been in these mix-ups before. Here, now, let's go up this side street. The important thing for you to do is to keep out of sight. Why? I didn't do anything wrong. I merely asked where I could find a job. You'll be arrested as a vagrant. 
It's an old habit around here. Sixty days is the usual sentence, sometimes longer. Sixty days? Just for walking through Plattsville by mistake? Mm-hmm. Now, at the top of the hill is my house. Now, go to the back door and tell the housekeeper that Mrs. McLeod sent you. She'll give you a good meal. You can have a bath and then hide in the woodshed. And tonight you can get out of town. Hmm. The Underground Railway. The slave escapes in the dark of night. You're reliving ancient history here in Plattsville, Mrs. McLeod. I thought the Emancipation Proclamation made all this unnecessary. I know, I know. Oh, here comes Sam Hildreth from the police force. Now get up to my house quick. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'd run into some other arm of the law anyhow. Hey, you. Come here. Yeah? Where are you going? No place in particular, just walking. Then walk along with me. I've got a particular place for you. What did I do? You picked the wrong town to panhandle in. Really? So you assume I was panhandling? Have you got any evidence? <coughs> ah, come on. You're going to be a guest of the city for 60 days. <sighs> well, so long, Mrs. McLeod. You tried hard. Somebody ought to bring this town up to date. You know, the Bill of Rights. <coughs> Start hiking. <laughs> Come on, Richardson. A lady here to see you. Okay. Well, not so talkative since you've been with us a couple of days. We know just how to take the starch out of guys like you. Hildreth, if you ever lost your fists, you lose your power of speech. <clears throat> Hurry back from your visit. I see you still need a little starch removed. Oh, Mr. Richardson, I thought maybe you could use this carton of cigarettes. Hello, Mrs. McLeod. You're just the lady I want to see. You run a newspaper, don't you? Yes, the Shield and Banner. Why, have you got a little item for me? A little item, Mrs. McLeod. I'll give you a screaming headline. First, I'll give you the facts. You can start off with a short description of this unsanitary cesspool they call a jail. Tell your readers how a lot of honest, bewildered men are packed in here. Living every day on eight cents worth of stale bread, bitter coffee, and condemned meat. Working in holes that even the rats have deserted. Let me tell you about a gang of us who were put on sewer detail. Joe? Yeah? How long have you been laying pipe down in the sewer? 38 days. 22 more to sweat out. With a crew like this, the city can lay a lot of sewer pipe for free. The city's not laying it. This is Doherty's job. Who's Doherty? General contractor. Handles all city projects. Political boss of Plattsville. So, he gets prison labor to do his jobs, charges the city for their work, and pockets the money. <laughs> nice racket. Yeah. Swell racket. As long as he can keep the jail full of honest men... How does he get away with it? Don't people know what's going on? Look, you, you talk like a jailhouse lawyer, Richardson. Folks don't care as long as the jail is full of people they don't know. That's where you're wrong. People always care about others when they know the facts. I have faith in people. Richardson, have you forgotten the beating you took out on the street? The people didn't beat me. That was a political machine. And I don't intend to dig sewers for any Mr. Doherty and his political machine. And I don't intend to see any more honest men doing it. There's a real item for you, Mrs. McLeod. I can't print that, Mr. Richardson. Why not? You run a newspaper, don't you? It used to be a newspaper when my husband was alive and running it. Today, a lot of folks call it McLeod's Folly. Jim wouldn't like the news we print now. Social items, obituaries, weather reports, farm doings. Then here's your chance to print something your husband would have approved. Well, I've often thought what a powerful force my paper could be. But I have no money. And I'm not big enough to tackle Doherty. Let me tell you a story. A long time ago, a man and his wife started out from Tennessee in a covered wagon. They were going to make a long-cherished dream come true. To have a little orchard in Oregon. 
Halfway across the Dakota Territory, their wagon was attacked by Indians and the husband was killed. The woman managed to escape into the hills where a scout found her and took her to Fort Lincoln. She had her choice of going back to Tennessee or joining the next train that passed through headed for Oregon. Now she had a whole family down south. The wise thing was for her to go back, but she didn't. She joined the next train for Oregon, helped fight more Indians, spent months of jolting over rough, uncharted wild country. She finally reached Oregon and planted that orchard. And she was happy. You know why? That was the dream both she and her husband had shared. And she'd made it come true. Jim and I used to dream of having the most fearless and courageous newspaper in the Southwest. Jim would have tackled a man like Doherty. I understand. I was a newspaper man not so long ago. I know when a story needs writing, this one is going to be written by me. And it's going to be printed by me. We'll work together, Mrs. McLeod. I'll get all the information we need right here in jail. There's an election coming up in three days. Doherty's machine is sure to be reelected. But, Mr. Richardson, at least we'll go down fighting. You never can tell what people will do until after the votes have been counted. Now, here's tomorrow's streamer headline. What are the citizens of Plattsville going to do about it? In subheads, what about the graft in prison labor? And then hit them with this first line. <laughs> Don Richardson, I'd like to talk to you. Thanks for taking me off the city guest list, Mr. Doherty. I see you're reading your morning edition of The Shield and Banner. Yes, yes, fearless editorial. Mm, very emotional. Wonder who's doing Mrs. McLeod's ghostwriting. I wouldn't know, but whoever it is certainly knows what he's talking about. Yes, I was shocked when I read of the injustice being accorded the transients who passed through our city. That's why I ordered your release, Richardson. You must have a lot of influence with the judge. Well, naturally, the court couldn't simply reverse its decision and let you go scot-free. You'll be on probation for 60 days, just a trial period, you understand, to demonstrate that you're a decent member of society. And a harmless one. Uh, Mr. Richardson, I admire your spirit. This town needs men like you. Look, Doherty, this couldn't be a move of yours to prove to the town what a big heart you have. Am I to become the living, walking example that there is no miscarriage of justice in Doherty's town? As a matter of fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to suggest that Mrs. McLeod's ghostwriter gets out an editorial to that effect. I doubt whether I have your influence. Hey, you know, son, I'm the owner of the Daily News, Mrs. McLeod's competitor. And how would you like a position on my paper as assistant editor? What would I write for you? Stories about how men are thrown in jail simply because they arrive in Plattsville without jobs? Well, I'll put it plainly. I had you removed from jail because I didn't want you... didn't want to become a martyr to the people, a hero. I don't like heroes. Men are out of jail. If you don't want to play ball with me, son, take my advice. Be smart. Don't play at all. Doherty, I've been looking a long time for a job. And I finally found one. I think I'll like working for the Shield and Banner. Mm, it can be a very short-lived job. Mrs. McLeod could be thrown into bankruptcy court tomorrow. I happen to be very close to her creditors. I see. I don't suppose the uh, creditors would object if we printed little innocent items of local interest. No, I think that would be continuing the policy of Shield and Banner very nicely. You know, I, I wouldn't like to see Mrs. McCloud get hurt. Uh, she's a very old friend of mine, and I, I wouldn't like to see a man who's just starting a new job get hurt, as long as it's a job he's starting, and uh, not a crusade. Well, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Doherty, I'll be going out to gather something interesting for tomorrow's edition. Perhaps the Ladies' Aid Society could furnish me a choice morsel. I'll be waiting for the next edition of the Shield and Banner, Richardson. In fact, uh, tomorrow morning I'll even read that paper before I read my own. Oh, hello, Mrs. McLeod. Sit down. I, uh, I've got to warn you about something. If we continue our attack on Doherty, you will probably lose the shield and banner. Mr. Richardson, let me tell you a story about a man and a woman who left Tennessee in a covered wagon.
In a moment, James Hilton will return to bring you the second act of McLeod's Folly, starring Robert Young. But first, how easy it is to let an important date slip by unnoticed. Somebody's birthday, somebody's anniversary, some other occasion for a thoughtful remembrance. Well, that's why you will want a Hallmark date book that's waiting for you now at the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. For, you see, this useful little book has a separate calendar page for each month of 1949 with a place for names and addresses of people to remember during that month. So you just can't forget. There's also room beside each date for reminders of things to do that day, whether it's attending a meeting or keeping an appointment. And at the back of the book, there's a convenient place for starting to compile your next year's list for sending Christmas cards. Now, doesn't this sound like a useful little book, one that you would like to own? Just wait until you see how beautiful it is, too, with its lovely camellia on the cover, its dainty pink and white pages. It's exactly the right size to slip into your purse or to keep handy beside your telephone. And remember, this useful and beautiful Hallmark date book is yours without obligation. Just ask for it at the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of Louis Brumfield's McLeod's Folly, starring Robert Young. Things were humming in the dingy old building that housed the Daily Shield and Banner. Tom Richardson and Mrs. McLeod had released the second blast against the Plattsville political machine despite Doherty's threat. And now it was the day before election. So little time and so much to tell. Tom, this is a great day for the Shield and Banner. The phones have been ringing like crazy. Folks telling us that they're on our side. People are interested, all right, but have we reached enough of them to have any effect? Well, today's edition should convince any diehards. Doherty's been too quiet. He won't let us get away with it. This is the day we've got to get through. We've got to work fast. Do you think my editorial is potent enough? It's dynamite, Tom. But will the people question that we have no proof or evidence against Doherty? We haven't time to gather evidence. We can only present facts and hope the people will vote according to their conscience. Now, let's get this to press. Good. Tonight, during the election parade, we'll go right into Doherty's camp. I've got a hundred kids lined up. We'll flood the parade with a shield and banner extra. If I were you, I'd send those kids home. I don't think we'll need them. Hildreth, this isn't the pokey. You don't push people around in here. Announce yourself before you come in. Okay, wise guy. I'm announced. Now, move aside. I'm taking over this paper. I'm the new editor. Mrs. McLeod, you're out of business. On what? creditors have closed down. But we're all ready to go to press. The least you can do is let us run off our last edition. Oh, no. I've brought along my own staff. Boys, take care of the last edition. Okay, boys. Right away. This, this smashing the presses. That figured. That's the subtle Doherty approach. Now get out of here, both of you. Aren't you going to take me back to your charming little guest house again, Hildreth? No. What for? Go on, have fun. Why don't you join the parade tonight? Maybe I will. Okay, boys, that'll do it. And, uh, Richardson, be careful. Remember you're on probation. I'd love to catch you in just one little slip. Get out. I guess you wish I'd never come to this town, Mrs. McLeod. I was just a ridiculous woman running a ridiculous paper until you came along. At least the shield and banner didn't die a slow, lingering death. You're a great woman, Mrs. McLeod, and a credit to the newspaper profession. I'm afraid I started a little late. I have only one regret, that the public didn't get to read that last editorial of yours. You want to know something? I hope, but I never really thought Doherty would let us get that last edition out. We're joining that parade tonight. The people will still know what was in that last editorial. Special edition of the Shield and Banner, personally handed to you by the editor. Say, your paper's getting a little thin, isn't it, Mrs. McLeod? Looks like a handbill. We ran it off on a hand press. They smashed our presses. But this one sheet will awaken the people. Hey, hey, Extra! 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 Extra!
people read about That's the free prison edition labor. of the Shield and Banner. Hey, here you are, mister. Old Doherty uses prison labor on his jobs for free. Every time prison labor is employed, someone in Plattsville is out of a job. Don't listen to him. He tried to panhandle me on the street. He's nothing but a bum. I'm working for the Shield and Banner, Polson. Be careful how you talk to me now. Extra, get your extra. Vote for Doherty and you vote for oppression. Get your free copy of the Shield and Banner. You're a stranger here. Who are you to tell us who to vote for? Wait a minute. Even a stranger is allowed to talk. You might have a point, young fella, but can you prove what you say? I can prove it in this way. When I came to this town, I didn't see any iron bars around it. If a family has a vicious dog, they put a sign on the gate, beware of dog. There was no sign on the gate to this city, beware of Doherty, and you need one. I always thought a man was free to walk down the street. kids off the street. I'll take care of Richards. There, friends, there's a fine example of the brand of democracy old Doherty dishes out. Shut up! They took away our paper, they smashed our presses, they're tearing the handbills, and now they're trying to gag us. You got a permit to distribute those handbills, Richardson? I wondered when you'd get to that. So now I'm a probation violator. Right, and it'll be a pleasure having you back where I can give you my personal attention. Let's go. Come on, break it up, everybody. Let us get through. Mom, Mom. what's he done, Hildred? Please, Mrs. McLeod, please don't interfere. I want it this way. And so do I. Step aside. Let us get through. Say, mister, you want it proof? Doesn't it look to you now like old Doherty believes me? Come on, get in. Looks to me like that young fella makes pretty good sense. And I don't like the way he was pushed around. Well, I don't like lectures from strangers. Why, he's not even a member of our community. But I am, Harry. I can remember when you came to this town, and you were a stranger. But the town was different then. It welcomed strangers. What is a town but a collection of strangers who've become neighbors? Well, when a baby's born, it's a stranger. But we soon learn to love it. A stranger looking for a new land discovered our country. A stranger called Marshall Platt founded this city. Yes, I would say Tom Richardson is a stranger. I would say that... Come on, Richardson. Get to your feet. It'll be easier for you to administer your love taps while I'm sitting down. I'll do it in my own way. Don't worry, you'll like it less standing. Get to your feet. Hilary, leave me alone. What? Mr. Doherty, I caught him passing out handbills saying you were a crook, and I thought it'd be a good idea. Who asked you to think? Oh, look, Richardson. This is all a mistake. You're a free man. Free man? Nobody's free while you run this town. I may as well stay here. Now, look, we'll call off your probation and you can leave town. You don't have to ride a boxcar either. Now, are you ready to leave? I don't think so. <laughs> Do you know I... when you're licked? I'm giving you the chance to leave through this back door. No, you're just a mite too anxious for me to go. Besides, I've got no place to go to anyway. I think, Mr. Doherty, I can handle this. Keep punching, Hildreth. You're winning my fight for me. Richardson, leave through that back door. Please, I'll tell the people it's all a mistake. Inefficiency on the part of the police department. I'll order house cleaning. That's a good idea, except that the house cleaning should start with you. Now be sensible, boy. You came into this town looking for any kind of a job. You can stay here and be a rich man. If you use your head... You've been buying your way in this town for a long time. Now your money's no good anymore. Maybe it won't even buy you a railroad ticket out. Oh, Hildred, you fool. You gave this man a chance to become a martyr as a hero. To arouse this town. Mrs. McLeod sold him a bill of goods. They're going to deliver this guy from jail. Doherty, I'm going to open that door and stop those people out there from doing something they'll regret. Quiet. Quiet. Quiet, please. Friends of Plattsville, this is neither the time nor the way to get Doherty. Get him at the polls tomorrow, using the right that free men enjoy everywhere. He bought, schemed, and powered his way into control of this town. But you can remove him and his machine much easier and quicker by a simple process of election. Many of you feel that, as an outsider, I presume too much by helping Mrs. McLeod start a cleanup campaign. But I've always had a belief in justice, an idea that men were civilized, and a feeling of pride that this country of mine was different from all others. Most of all, I felt that an honest man, anywhere, had the right to walk a street any time and not be molested. And after tomorrow's election, 
I'm sure that honest men will again walk the streets of Plattsville with a new sense of freedom. Tom, Tom, you did it. You did it. No, I didn't do it. Neither did you, Mrs. McLeod. We all did it together. People will always do the right thing when they know the facts. I have faith in people. Before James Hilton and Robert Young return, I'd like to tell you about the beautiful Hallmark date book that is waiting for you at the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. Those who already have theirs say it's just about the most useful little book they've ever owned. You see, every day of the coming year has a place in it with room to jot down things to do that day and a place for names and addresses of people to remember on important occasions like birthdays and anniversaries. It's a little beauty, too, with its camellia-decorated cover and its dainty pink and white pages. Now, all you do to get your Hallmark date book is just ask for it. There's no obligation. It's yours from the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. Here again is James Hilton. Whenever you have a tale by Louis Brumfield, you're guaranteed good reading, and from our angle, good listening. And whenever you cast Bob Young in the hero's role of a Brumfield story you have something pretty close to perfection. Thank you, Robert Young, for a splendid performance. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. I don't know why it is, but I always like to play the part of a newspaper man. Maybe I'm just a disappointed reporter. Well, I'm a hero to my daughters anyway. When they heard I was going to be on the Hallmark Playhouse, they said, Swell, now you can bring us some more of those keen Hallmark dolls. So if it's all the same to you, Mr. Hilton, I'll take my pay in Hallmark dolls (laughs) and remain a hero in the eyes of my most critical audience my family. Well, your wish shall be granted. And I want to hasten to add you're always a hero to everyone who ever hears you on the air or sees you on the screen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you of a treat we have in store for you next week. It's one of those stories that will surprise you, called Clay Shuttered Doors by Helen R. Hull. And it stars that fine actress you've been hearing mentioned lately as a likely Academy Award winner, Miss Jane Wyman. And the following week, Christopher Morley's great comedy drama, Parnassus on Wheels, with that famous stage and screen star, Ruth Hussey. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our story was written for radio by Jack Rubin. Ladies and gentlemen, this weekend and every week, help to reduce traffic accidents. Adjust Adjust your driving speed to road and weather conditions. Pedestrians, too, should be extra careful. Remember, accidents don't always happen to someone else. It pays to be careful. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Helen Hull's Clay Shuttered Doors starring Jane Wyman and the following week Christopher Morley's Parnassus on Wheels starring Ruth Hussey. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.